Hello and welcome to Maruya. Later this morning, I'm flying to Sydney via Marimbula with Regional Express, also known as Rex. Now, next week, this airline is entering the jet age with a whole lot of uh, Boeing 737s that they're getting from Virgin Australia. But I thought it might be interesting to check out the backbone of their fleet, the Saab 340 propeller aircraft. Um, so let's check in and see how it goes. I make videos about planes and one train. If you enjoy watching trip reports on board aircraft and tours around significant planes in museums, then make sure you check out my channel, subscribe, click the notification bell, and find me on Instagram and Facebook. As we walk into Maruya's recently refurbished terminal, I'll tell you a little more about the airline. Rex formed in 2002 with the acquisition of a number of smaller regional airlines, and it's now the biggest regional airline in Australia with 60 destinations and 58 aircraft. Up until just recently, their fleet was made up entirely of Saab 340 turboprops, and that's what I'm flying on today. From next week, they'll be flying 737 jets between the capital cities, and I'm actually booked on the inaugural flight on Monday, March the 1st, so expect a vlog from that flight sometime in that evening. As you can see, the terminal is fairly basic, although adequate, and there's also the Hertz car rental desk. One thing I really like was this area where you can sit and wait outside and get a good view of the arriving aircraft. And here's our aircraft arriving from Sydney. Now it may come as a surprise to some of you that Saab actually make aircraft. They're well known for their cars, which were usually bought by sort of architects and geography teachers. They were always a bit left of centre, but for people who actually knew stuff about cars, they were always very well respected. In fact, they were the first to use turbocharging, which is something commonplace these days. But back onto the planes. Saab had been building military aircraft for decades, but in the 1970s they wanted to get into the civil aviation business, so they started working on this short-haul airliner with around 30 seats. They also went for turboprop engines because they're far more fuel efficient than the turbofans, even though they're a little bit slower and noisier. You have to remember that this aircraft was designed in the 70s just after the 1973 fuel crisis, so fuel economy was at a forefront in their mind. As the plans progressed, they realised how complicated the development program was going to be, and they signed up with the experienced American Fairchild aircraft manufacturer to help out. It first flew in 1983, and then in 1989, the first major upgrade, the 340B, was introduced with more powerful engines, a wider horizontal stabilizers, and the option of active noise and vibration cancellation technology. And that's what this aircraft was, as it was built in 1991. In 1994, the final 340B Plus came out with more upgrades. In 1999, production ceased after a total of 459 were built, although it continues to have a reputation as being a sturdy design, with over half of those still remaining in the air. Morning. After a few passengers got off, it was our turn to board. As the aircraft was continuing on uh, south to Marimbula, it was already pretty full. As you will see on board, the seats are in a one-two layout, with the A side being singles, so it's ideal if you're travelling alone. Now if you look closely, you'll see that row 2 doesn't have any windows, so definitely don't book that if you enjoy the views. I was sitting towards the back in seat 10A, and I'll show you that in a little more detail. Now it comes with individual overhead air vents, which are vital especially when sitting on the ground out in the hot regional destinations. There's also the usual uh, tray table and adequate legroom for an aircraft that's designed to cover short distances. Unfortunately, the weather was a little drab in Maruya, although it got much better in Marumbula, uh, which you'll see shortly.
so the flight between these two regional airports was only 114 kilometers, which were covered in 20 minutes. The views of the coastline down below were fantastic as we cruised along at uh, 4,800 feet, which was just below the cloud line. Unfortunately, it remained cloudy until we started our descent into Marimbula, although, as you can see, the view was now obscured by the glare from the sun. Anyway, the view as we came down to land was pretty epic, and it certainly looks like somewhere I'd like to explore in more detail another time. We were on the ground for around 20 minutes for the passengers to get off and for the seats to be cleaned. The flight attendant went through and wiped down each seat and tray table individually, obviously because of the whole COVID cleaning requirements. I might add that masks were mandatory for the duration of the flight and inside the airport terminals, except for when we were eating. With everyone on board, it was time to head to Sydney and once again the views were pretty impressive. So I was actually booked to take this flight around 12 months ago. This whole region had been badly affected by severe bushfires just over 12 months ago, so the purpose of my trip was twofold. I was keen to help promote the region as a tourist destination, especially to the large Sydney market who understandably were scared off by the fire. The other reason was, well, because I like flying and the Saab 340s is a rare type of aircraft. But then of course, COVID hit and the travel was once again off the cards, resulting in a real double whammy for the tourist industry. So now that COVID is under control in Australia and New South Wales looks like it has a fairly sensible attitude towards managing outbreaks, now is certainly a great time to travel domestically and check out new parts of this great continent we live on. Once again, we flew into the clouds, although this time our cruising altitude was 16,000 feet, so we flew up over them for this 59 minute leg back up to Sydney. While there was no snack on the first leg, in fact the seatbelt side uh, remained on the entire time, there was the option of a sweet or savoury snack and a drink on this leg. A common question about these smaller turboprops is how comfortable they are. To be honest, I found it fine, although it was noisy, so I'm not sure if this had the optioned active noise cancellation. Even though we were flying through a bit of cloud, I certainly didn't find the turbulence unsettling. While this aircraft is 30 years old, knowing that it has been well maintained and that it's fundamentally a well-tested design meant that I wasn't particularly worried. And on the topic of comfort, there's a single toilet at the back of the aircraft. The flight was fairly smooth sailing until we started our descent into a drab and miserable Sydney. Although, having said that, the cloud surfing always does make for some great views. As we broke through the clouds, we got a quick glimpse of the Harbour Bridge and Sydney's CBD. So how was the flight? Look it's fine, it's certainly a lot faster than driving and the comfort levels were perfectly adequate for a short flight. The flight attendant was friendly and we actually arrived in Sydney ahead of time. There's also some pretty good ticket prices at the moment as Qantas and Rex are having a fisticuff over a number of routes including Marimbula.
As we made our way to the terminal, here's a quick glimpse of the new Rex Boeing 737 that I captured on the way down to Maria a few days ago. As I mentioned before, they've just joined the Jet Age and I'll be on board this very aircraft for the inaugural flight next Monday, so keep an eye out for that video. It's always exciting to see a new airline, well, sort of, and I'm looking forward to checking it out. Now you usually get dropped off at a remote stand and then catch a bus to the terminal, although we were lucky to get gate 31, which is next to all of the jets, so it's just a quick uh, short walk into the terminal. Oh, and just a reminder, and here's better footage of row 2, which doesn't have any windows, so avoid that row if you can and you want a view. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and comment below on what you thought of the flight or Rex's entrance into the Jet Age competing with Qantas and Virgin. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you another time.